we have here then is one fallow deer and judging by its conformation I imagine this was a cool beast had to be called doesn't really matter it all tastes the same ha ah, baler twine baler twine right I'm going to show you a breakdown of this thing this lovely creature if I can get this bloody string off start breaking it down into sub primals to start with so it's more manageable to work with so what I'm going to do first of all is cut that mahoosive neck off very simple put his arm in there Of course, being a butcher, being used to having lambs where they're slaughtered and then have their shoulders set with elastic bands, as you lot know, your hunters, your shooters, it doesn't always work like that. So next, let's get it up. I'm going to take off these shoulders. Really simple. As if you were taking a leg off a chicken, just follow the natural seam and you can pull, as you can see in there, and cut. Make sure we take in that big blade bone. natural seam nice and gentle this is all going into diced be made into sausages burgers so on and so forth that's one side I should quickly nip off number two if I can hold her up by finding that natural seam again working down it two shoulders put them over there So we're going to spin it round, take off those back legs, the haunch. Just loosen that off. Peel it away. So like with pigs, like with the lambs, searching for that vertebrae up from the tail just by getting the point of our knife in and marking it while I'm here I'm just going to nip out those tenderloins they just pretty much pull out Nice and simple. Just like that. Right, go back to marking. So yeah, we've loosened that off.
Just down to that mark. Where's my salt? And that gives us our haunches to work on. The conformation out the best, as you can see, normally this would start the meat here, be a bit wider. So yeah, definitely a cool beast. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this back strap off in one piece. But I just want to shorten this. So take these breasts off. Not a lot on these. Where's my saw? It just allows the carcass to stand up. the best dressed out beast I've seen. I've seen a lot better. That's one side. Flip it. Do the other. So like I said what I'm looking for then is back strap that loin fillet, breaking down the haunches into subprimals for roasting. And then I'm after trim for burgers, sausages, and some dice for salt. Right. Now I'm looking a little bit smaller. Okay then, let's go along the top. That paddy whack. Absolutely no waste on this when I finish with it. So as you can see there then, the gold is from about here to here. So, I'm just gonna split there and down each side really quickly and take these neck fillets off. If it was colder in winter, I'd most probably cut these into neck rounds. Because obviously, you know, you cut your meat to your seasons barbecue season is just starting so the last thing you want is loads of stewing pieces you can get more money actually by making them into burgers making them into sausages so just take that off trim all these bones up in a bit just getting it break down The money shot. Either side of this backbone, just down to the feather bones, just getting it started. Knife, just over those finger bones. On the loin end and then again knife right up close over those finger bones on the loin end just begin to loosen it off And we can start to work it off the rib cage and the remainder of that neck. So just using the point of my knife really, 
just easing it off. Nice and gentle. I'm not worried about those bits on, on the carcass yet. That's what I'm worried about. That's not worried, but that's the bit I'm concentrating on. The money. All the bones will be cleaned. For our trim. That's the beauty of these. Five inch semi flex. And that curved bit, it allows you to just nicely ride it down these ribs, pull in at the same time. And as you can see, like it almost comes off on its own. Nice and steady. There is back strap number two. So what we're going to do here then peel that skin off. I think this must be must have been hanging in the fridge for how many days is it now? When did he bring it? Maybe five days. You can see just holding there, pulling till we get that beautiful trim square off. And then my trick because this is going to be portioned anyway, start halfway, and as if you were taking the skin off a fish just gently skim it off so the other side your knife nice and flat holding the skin giving it a wiggle trim off any dry bits looking good so no waste I know you're watching this game well look dude you'd have some on there you've got to wait to the end to see the bigger picture see what we've achieved so again that neck end see so you could be tempted to split that but I'm not going to So you can always loosen that, drive it off if you want to. The last thing you want to do is be going into that lovely loin fillet. So yeah, we're getting that. Beautiful. Right, in the bin with some of this. So we're starting to build up our oh, collection of venison cuts there is our back strap don't be too fussy better just take that bit off for all the keen eyed ones out there all the experts yes you know who you are wonderful Right then, onto this carcass. What I'm going to do, 
you don't need to stand and watch me do this you've said it all before but I'm gonna start just taking all the trim off I'm gonna go in between all the ribs and I will show you what I glean from it at the end so yeah fast forward looks like something from a Tim Burton film doesn't it imagine that imagine waking up at night and looking over your bed and that's just looking at you hey anyway that's the trim I've got off it so far beautiful it goes just check through that I thought I saw a dodgy bit then yeah there I like the look of that bit right on to the next so I'll just show you one of these little tenderloins so simple I'm going to square it off and do the same with the other one. So over here in the UK, this is known as the breast. Again, trimmed out the usual goodies. Now, I know a lot of you watch this and you're thinking, why are you doing that with that? You've got to remember that it's horses for courses, me old China. People do it different ways and different countries have different ways of butchering. So basically, what I'm gonna do is take the meat off here, but what I will do, maybe, out of here, is get a rack of ribs. I don't normally do it, but um, it's got a bit of meat on. Get a knife. Fat basher. Through. I can get through that bone there. Like I said, not the best dressed out beast I've seen. Still got me aim though. So I'm going to take that off. I think it's a little tatty. But yeah, gives us a nice rack of ribs there. Just needs a bit of a wash off. Yeah, happy with that. So I will just trim off the remainder off the sternum here of that bit I just chopped off just going through any blood meat obviously you could give it to your dog whatever you like but I'm thinking venison burgers made from western fowlers Finest venison and royal game seasoning, just amazing. So, yeah, just basically, I don't know what I call that shoving it off, shaving it off. <laughs> Goes back to me pile, and I'll quickly nip through this one. Right onto these haunches, split them. I'm going to chop them for a change. Just break that pelvis. Through the tail. Yeah, not really impressed with this. It's very poor dressing out, really. 
there's a bit of do do there. That's what I'm going to do because they're really popular here. Is cut these chunks off, make them into steak. People love it. One, two. Saw needs a new blade. Bad workman blames his tools. Ow. Fucking bones. Sharp. Cut them off. Just give me that bit there. Burn those out. First half. Look at this though. Not very good. Not very impressed. I should tell the guy. So, lateral bend, knee, patella through. Take off those shanks. Just like that. So again, can you see in there, just like that, spin it around, give it a wiggle, we got our shanks off very quickly, down the Achilles tendon, stretch it out, what I'm going to do is just French trim these very quickly, not too fussy. Spend a bit more time at the end finessing it. And then with the bluntest saw you can find, go through that bone, basically gives you nice venison shank decent size easily feed two people repeat with this side Number two, right onto these haunches. I'm going to break these down into their subprimals. So that's the top side, the silver side, and the thick flank. First, we need to remove the H bone, the hip bone, or the pelvic girdle. We've already cut it in half and then cut it in half again. So gently tracing the curvature of that bone. Now we lift up, we ride that flexi blade down. And round. And trim. Any front calf. So repeat with this side. Till we hit that ball and socket of the femur. That's out. So working on these haunches then. Let's bring that camera in a bit. So working on this haunch then, the haunch is made up of three sub-primals. If you look there, that one I got my hand on there is what we call the thick flank or the knuckle. This one here, you can see the seam here is the top side and those two run in there. 
of a silver side. Basically, you've got a road map. If your deer hasn't got too much fat on it, you can literally see where you've got to cut. So what we do, take this knuckle off, this thick flank, we go down to the femur, you'll see it appear now. Do it some of that action. Take this down to where it meets the silver side, which is just in here. And that is our little thick flank, our little knuckle. Take that bit off. One of the hardest bones in the body, that patella, that kneecap. I'm just going to peel this bit off. So this makes a tremendous mini roasting joint. Because at the end of the day, not everybody likes venison. And we get a lot of people in here say, oh, my son and my husband likes it, but we don't. So, no use having a big horn, so you have these lovely little mini roasting joints, and they are just absolutely stunning. Put a few strings around them, straighten them up, skim. Sinew off. And you've got an absolute cracker. Some strings around that. Beautiful. So next we are left with our top side and our silver side still married. So, finish off taking that femur out. Very simple. And then again, we want to separate this silver side from the top side by the seam as you can see it there look almost pulling that apart there is the silver side take that part of the knuckle off there take that off there That silver skin off there. Square up. Just like that. Carefully take that bit of silver skin off. Because we don't want to start breaking the seam of that salmon cut that's in there. But again. Some strings around that. A nice mini roasted joint. The block is piling up. So the lovely top side then, just get our knife in. Just get rid of some of that silver skin. What I like about the top side is you can leave it as a roasting joint or you could cut it into steaks. I'll show you what they look like in a minute. I'll put some string around one. But yeah, again, another fantastic cut of meat. And the prime bit of that is that part there, what's known as the corner one solid muscle you know sometimes when you get joints roasting joints beef lamb pork 
you slice into it and they fall apart. That's because they're normally flanks, thick flanks, silver sides. They've got just natural seams in where that is just one meaty muscle. Yeah, absolutely superb that is. Wonderful. So onto one of these rumps then, or the chumps. Now, I think in the US you call this the top sirloin, but over here in the UK, this is a seriously popular cut of meat, rump steak. So we're just releasing it from the rest of that pelvic girdle, following it round. Releasing it. Just trim a bit off. Square it off. So if that was off a cow, that would be called a D-shaped rump. Purely because it looks like a D. But this, obviously, being the cutter is great on the barbecue. The grill makes fantastic steaks. Look at these. Wonderful, wonderful cut of meat. Right, all that's left is the shoulder and tidy the trim and we are done. But where I skimmed off, where I seamed off that shoulder by the blade that muscle that was left on the rib cage, so simple. Like I said, I want trim. Bearing in mind, one pack of the burger seasoning takes 3.4 kilos of meat. That's just for one mix. So before you know it, uh, a mix of sausages, a mix of burgers, and all your trim is gone, and your freezer's full. Anyway, I digress. That muscle I skimmed off the rib cage, you just go through it really easily into cube. I want to keep it nice cubes as well so those ends trim, work our way through. I don't want to sound like I'm repeating myself, but you know, summer's coming, it's spring, people will eat less stews, less casseroles. So people say to me, how do you know what to cube and what to mince? Well, look at a piece of meat like that. You cut that into three. And then cube. Just like that. And then a bit there in your mince. Yeah, cube venison. So last, but by no means least, then my friends, is the ball ache shoulder. It's just a matter of breaking this down and putting it into whatever you want. It's just breaking off that front shank, shin, whatever you want to call it just taking of those muscles either side mince now the majority of this will go to dice but we'll go to processing further processing so again sausages burgers coftas pies all I'm, it's just a slash job really unless you're interested in slow roasting it but from a business point of view you're going to get more bang for your buck more money bang for your buck quite literally if you put it into value-added products you know so real simple 
not too fussy boning out job here. Go through there. And that will take, we'll take that off there. So, this blade bone, the scapula, go one side of the wings. As you can see there, you can hear it. I'm just holding that taut. You can go the other side. Just with your knife, almost horizontal. Again, shave it off. That's what I'm gonna call that te technique. Shaving the meat off. Yeah, and that's that. So all we're left is with the humerus or the upper arm, which we've partly deboned to expose. Just finish off the job. And it's just into its requisite piles. So, nice big chunks there. Dice. I'm not going to bother putting that skin in. Two mints. Because it will just snag up your mincer. But yeah. As you've seen all along, you're learning what is mints. What is dice. Or should I say, what is ground and what is cubed? So yeah, I'm just going to finish that other shoulder real quickly. And then we're going to put it all together. And have a little reminder of what we've achieved. See you shortly. And by that I mean the magic of camera. Not even 10 seconds. Okay, now I know it looks like I've just totally mutilated that wonderful fallow deer, but this is what we've achieved. As you can see here, if I can hold this camera, our rump chum steaks, two top sides, our two shanks, our two silver sides, our knuckle joints, I think you call those the football joints in the US, uh, I think. Four back straps, two tenderloins, there's those rack of ribs. Now each one of these black tubs weighs at 100 grams. We got 3.8 kilos of diced. Let me just weigh the other one. Where is it here? I have to excuse the camera. And we got 5.2 near enough of trim. So. 3.4 kilos for a batch of burgers and sausages so we're going to get like one and a half batches which is a result we got that lovely diced we got that back strap our roasting joints our steaks and our shanks so yeah my friends that is it another deer cut up by me now, if you've liked what you've seen here today on the SRP, please click subscribe when my face comes up down here somewhere. Also, check me out on my social media. If you look in the show bar, you'll see the links, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And, of course, if you want to help the channel along, because remember, these videos are free. There's a chef here in the UK at the moment who's offering to do a digital course online for £200. Well, you've just had it for nothing that's what it's all about sharing the knowledge so yeah if you'd like to help the channel along please check out my patreon page but until next time what can we say about this well i've cut up loads of deers for people not the best confirmation slight poor dressing out but when you look past all that and you see this you kind of get it don't you right my friends i'm getting this in this in the fridge and i'm going home. It's been a long day. Take care.